Hey and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Recently, while developing a new app, I came across the problem of finding faces of uh, famous people and also um, how to center an image around this face so that the face itself is always in the center. So I uh, created a specific class which I called Wikiface that um, downloads an image of a popular or famous person um, from Wikipedia and then centers the image around uh, around the face itself. So we are going to dive into um, face recognition and also we are going to uh, explore how to find um, Im images of people on Wikipedia. So let me give you a quick demo and this is our demo application. Um, so the only thing we have to do here is entering a name of someone um, who we believe that uh, there is a Wikipedia article and then press return and there we go. There's Steve Jobs or let's say um, Sir Patrick Stewart. So let's see if we can find him here and there he is. So this is what we are going to create. So uh, let's get right started. Um, and opening up Xcode, create a new single view application, which we're going to call Wikiface. We won't use core data or unit tests or anything else. Um, simply press next and I'm going to create it on my desktop. And here we go. So let's create the Wikiface class itself. I'm going to select app delegate and press command and on my keyboard to create a new Cocoa Touch class. Um, which I'm going to call Wikiface, and this is going to be a subclass of NS object. So let's create that class. And when this cr class is created for us, it is automatically importing UI kit. But additionally, we are going to need the image I framework. Before we continue uh, creating our Wikiface class, we are going to implement our user interface. So let's um, head to the main storyboard. And this is a pretty simple user interface. We will add a little label at the top. Enter Wikiface here. Make this a little bigger and in a custom font, let's say, of a near next condensed and make this a little bigger like, uh, let's say, 36. All right, make this a little bigger so that we can uh, read everything, um, place it in the center somewhere. Uh, what else? We will need a text field. So I'm typing in text field here in my library. Bring up my text field here. Make this a little bigger. We will set the auto layout constraints just in a second. And last thing we are going to need is an image view so that we can display our image. And let's just say um, the image view gets a size of, uh, let's say, 200 pixels width and um, 250 pixels height. And then let's place that here somewhere in the center. All right, and the most important thing now is to change the um, the UI view content mode here to aspect fill. And now let's add the layout constraints. So here for our label wiki face, uh, we'll just set a vertical spacing. Uh, we will center it horizontally in the container. Uh, don't worry about the um, or orange or yellow lines here. We will fix that in a second. And uh, then let's handle the text field, just a leading space and a trailing space and a vertical spacing uh, between the text field and the label. And notice that for creating these um, layout uh, constraints, I'm simply pressing control on my keyboard and then click drag to the appropriate location. Um, so in this case, from the text field to the label, and I want to uh, use a vertical spacing here. And the last thing we want to do is center this um, image view horizontally and vertically in the container and to select both options. At the same time, I press shift on my keyboard and simply select both of them and then press return and now it's immediately um, centered or we have the constraints to center it here and what's missing here for this um, 
for for our image view is a um, is the size, so the width and the height, and we will fix this width and height um, by simply click drag here in the center of our image view. And I'm going to press shift on my keyboard again and um, confirm that. So now we still have these orange lines here because it's not perfectly aligned or the, the size of our label is not perfect. Um, and to change that, we will go in the outline of our document or of, of our view controller scene, press on the yellow circle here, and then we get our warnings. And then we will simply update the frames and apply this to all views in container. And that's it. No auto layout issues anymore. And now we can also connect our user interface with the viewcontroller.swift class. Um, so let's bring up the assistant editor. And what we need is a, um, uh, an outlet for our text field. So this is going to be the name text field. And then we will have an outlet for our image view, which is going to be the face image view. So now this is connected. And what we will also need is the UI text field delegate. So let's add a comma here and then um, enter the UI text field delegate protocol here. And to adopt it, we will simply add one delegate method, which is um, text field should return. And we will return true here. And that should be it for our view controller class at the moment. We will first have to implement our Wikiface class to make use of our user interface. So let's close the assistant editor and head right, uh, back right to our Wikiface class. And since we're going to use Swift 2.0, we can uh, leverage the power of the new um, error handling features of Swift 2.0. And to do that, we will first of all create an enumeration for possible errors. So this is going to be wiki face error enumeration, which is an error type. And to define it, we will only have one error here. So one case is going to be could not download image. So this is going to be our, um, our enumeration for error handling. And next up is going to be our main function for finding the face of a person. And we're going to declare that as a class function. And this is a, has the advantage that we will later we won't have to create an object of this wiki face class. So instead of writing let um, wiki face, um, it's going to be, uh, we would need an initializer here. We won't use that. Instead, we're going to say wiki face dot uh, face for person. And this is possible as soon as we uh, declare a class function, which means that we do not need an object of this class. So we're going to name it face for person. And we will need some parameters here. And the first one is going to be the person itself as a string. So this is the search string that we use to identify the person that we are looking for. And then what we also need is a size so that we know in what size we want to download the image. So let's ma uh, make a, C a CG size parameter here. And um, the last part is going to be a completion handler, which tells us later when we have downloaded the image. So this is going to be our completion completion handler. Um, and this also has two parameters. The first one is a UI image, which will contain the image of the person that we are interested in. And we will make that optional since it's not obvious that we will always um, get an image back from Wikipedia. So this is going to be optional. But the second parameter, which is image found, won't be optional because this is a bool and we always want to return if we have found an image or not. But what we do not need is a return value. So we will keep these um, parentheses empty. And since we want to use the new error handling, we will also add a throws keyword here and throw some errors later on um, so that we can check if we have downloaded an image or not. Um, and now that we have our class definition, we need to work with this 
person parameter. Since we are using the Wikipedia API, and this is going to be URL based, so we will create a specific URL for our request. And um, since we cannot handle white spaces in a URL, we will create an escaped string. So let's create a constant for that and call it escaped string. And to convert our uh, person string to that escape string, we will simply write the person and now string by appending a percent encoding with allowed characters. I hope your screen is um, big enough for that uh, function. And now the allowed characters are going to be a specific character set, which is going to be the NS character set for URL host allowed characters. So this is going to be our uh, character set. And now we can work with our second parameter, which is the size and we will determine um, which size we want to send to the Wikipedia API. Um, so we have two dimensions width and height and we will determine which is the bigger one and the, bi the bigger one is that which th is the size which we will uh, send to Wikipedia for our request. Um, so we will uh, call this variable, let's say pixels for API request, which is going to be uh, an integer conversion of our um, CG float values here. And to determine the maximum value, we will simply use the max function. And we have two possible values, which is the size and its width and the size and its height. And since these are CG float values, we will simply convert them to an integer. And now let's also uh, create the Wikipedia URL, which is going to be um, uh, a constant, um, which we will simply call URL. And now we will use the NS URL initializer with a string. And the string that we are going to use is this one. I've already prepared that. And let's have a closer look. Um, so this is the address which we will use. And um, this is simply the English Wikipedia. And there is the API and we will query for titles. And here and here are the um, positions in the URL where we will enter our um, custom information like the escaped string and the pixels for the API requests. So uh, let me just copy that string and paste it here. I've also copied the tab. So let's remove that. And um, this is simply going to be the escaped string. And the thumb size um, is going to be our pixels for API request, which we could also multiply by two to get a bigger version of it um, for retina displays. And we could also determine if we're on iPhone 6 plus by analyzing the screen size and depending on the screen size, then change the multiply here to three for the iPhone 6 plus or um, uh, or bigger devices. Now that we have the URL ready, we can create a task which asks the Wikipedia API for um, our uh, results that, that we are looking for. And since we're using the um, Swift 2.0 error handling, we will use a guard keyword here uh, to, um, to protect our the next statement and um, give us the possibility to throw an error if something terrible happens. So uh, let's create a task, which is going to be an NSURL session task, and it's going to be optional. And um, let's initialize this with an NSURL uh, session uh, and its shared session. And then we will use the data task with URL and a completion handler. And we have our URL already prepared. Let's also unwrap it. And this should actually autocomplete, but since it doesn't, let's just do it ourselves. Um, so that means that we have to um, put a uh, curly brace here. This is going to be our data object. This is going to be our response. This is going to be our error. Uh, then after the void, we will use an in keyword and then close our completion block. 
And since we use, use the guard statement, we also need to put an else here um, in order to throw the error later. And this should do it. All right. And now that we have our uh, completion block, uh, block ready, we can check if the error is equal to nil. So if there was no error downloading the data that we have required, we can create a Wikipedia dictionary, uh, which will hold all the results that we want. And to make this a little easier, we won't um, uh, catch the error here by using try and an exclamation mark. Uh, we can override the, uh, the need for, um, for catching an error. And now we will simply use the NSJSON serialization and use JSON object with data. And this gives us the possibility to, um, to use the response that we got, which is a data object. And this data object it contains JSON because we have specified um, the format that we want as JSON. And um, so we will simply put our data object here and also unwrap it and then the options is going to be NSJSON reading options and we will allow fragments and then we will cast that to an NS dictionary for easier handling later. And now what we can do is simply have a look at that dictionary. And uh, what we also need to do uh, in order for this to work is we have to start our task and we will do that um, after our else statement here. So what we want to do is our task to resume. Finally, give this a try. Um, let's just go back to the view controller and um, let's remove that from view to load. We have to call our face for person function uh, before we can test anything. So let's add a try exclamation mark because we do not yet want to handle any errors. And let's call wiki face face for person. Uh, let's say Tim Cook. Add to size of let's say 200 200 it's, it doesn't matter at the moment and there is our uh, completion handler let's build that that works nice and now let's run it and let's see what happens and we get an error it says unexpectedly nil uh, while found uh, unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping an optional value so let's see where do we use optionals this is unwrapped uh, ah, here, the escaped string needs to be unwrapped before we can put it into um, uh, into our URL. We could also check if there is a URL um, or if there is a, a escaped st a string here. And here you can also see how an escaped string looks by adding percent twenty. Uh, we are simply replacing the white spaces, uh, but for simplicity's sake, let's keep it that way. And now let's run it and see what happens. And there we go. We have an output here in our console. And let me bring that to a text edit for a second so that we can analyze what's happened here. So we have some JSON code here. And this is pretty nice. So as you can see, we have some things here, some um, keys and values. So here we've got a query page and ID, a page ID, and there is the name of our uh, of our image, which is Tim Cook 2009 cropped. And there is what we want. This is the URL of our image. So when we copy that and paste it to Safari, we should get a nice picture. And this is what we're going to get later in our app. But for that to work, we have to go through this JSON hierarchy here. And that's our next step. That, that is what we are going to do. And we have a dictionary here. So let's use it by creating a flat statement. And the first uh, key that we want to check is query. So let's use wikidict object for key. I don't know why autocompletion does not work, um, but never mind. Um, so the key is query cast it to an NS dictionary. Um, next up is going to be pages. So let's see if let pages equals query object for key um, pages. 
also let's cancel to an NS dictionary. And um, now we have the page content, I think. Page content. So let's say pages, not object for key. Um, well, which was it? Ah, I see. Now here we have uh, an interesting problem since we do not need, uh, we do not know the um, the key here, which is the page ID. We have to um, do that a little differently. Um, so what we are going to do is we use our pages object, which is an NS dictionary, and here's the reason why we are using NS dictionary since there is a um, uh, there is a nice function which is called all values and we can use the all values function to get the first object in the list and also convert that to an NS dictionary that we have this uh, dynamic key and that we also have this um, the object or the next dictionary that is hidden behind this dynamic key uh, what we can do is create another if let statement but finally we get closer we now get uh, the uh, we now get the the thumbnail dictionary so let's call this thumbnail and we'll use page content object for key and now we will use a thumbnail as and as a dictionary. And now I think it should be the last. Uh, let's see. Now we have uh, we have thumbnail, and in this dictionary we have the source, and this is what we are looking for. So let's see if let um, let's call that a thumb URL uh, equals um, thumbnail object for key and the keyword source and now we will cast that to a string and this is it this uh, somehow light down um, light to the side rocket kind of uh, if let statements um, and now we can uh, create an UI image object um, which we'll call face image and we will initialize it with a UI image, we will use the data initializer since we can use the NS data class to um, get contents of URL, and then we'll use the NS URL and its string initializer to get the um, to get the data, and then we should unwrap uh, both the NS URL and the data object that we have created. And now let's run that and that's, uh, that works pretty nice. And now that we have that, we can finally call our completion handler. So let's call it. And we have our image, which is face image. And we know we have found an image. So we can set this to true. But if we couldn't find a thumbnail, then we uh, of course did not find an image. So let's add an else here and also call our completion handler. And then we have to uh, put nil to our image object parameter and a false um, to image found since um, we haven't actually found a thumbnail. So we also have are not able to find an image. And here, after uh, we have guarded our task, what we also have to do, we have to throw an error. So we uh, simply use the throw keyword and then use our wiki face error enumeration and say could not download image. So there we go. And this is it actually. With this implementation, we can now head back to our view controller and um, remove our statement here um, in view that load. And what we also should do is um, use our name text field and add the delegate so that we can actually use this text field should return a delegate method. And now what we want to do here is uh, we want to um, see if we have some content in our text field. So let's see text field content uh, text field dot text. 
So if there is something we want to uh, use our wiki face class now. So since we're throwing an error, we have to use the do keyword. And then what we want to do is we want to try again, as soon as my keyboard starts working, uh, wiki face dot face for person. And now we can use the text field content and this and let's also define the size, which is um, 200 by 250 pixels of our um, of our image view. And then we have an image, which is going to be a UI image, and it's optional and the bool image found, uh, which is not optional. So and now we can have ask if image found is equal to true, then what we uh, of course can do is displaying the image in our image view. But since we have used auto layout, and now we are in a background thread, we have to do that on the main thread since auto layout stuff and everything uh, UI related should always be done on the main thread. Uh, thread. What we want to do is dispatch this asynchronously um, on the main queue, let's manage get main queue. And there is our block. And so now we can use self dot face image view dot image equals um, our image. And there we go. And now we have one error left. And since we're using error handling, uh, we also have to catch our errors that are possible. So um, let's, um, let's put a catch statement after the do. And the catch statement works um, pretty similar to an else statement. So we have a catch. And we want to see if wikiface not wikiface error is could not download image. And if this is the case, um, then we will simply write a, so a message to the console, something like could not access Wikipedia um, for of for downloading an image, something like that. And then we can also add. Uh, a last catch statement um, if an ar another error occurred and then we'll simply print the error and then we can build that and this succeeded and now let's have a look and since we use text field should return as our delegate method um, as soon as we have entered some text here uh, let's see let's use Tim Cook again and as soon as we press return we get Tim Cook isn't that nice and um, with a pretty little amount of code and we can now download every image of anyone who is a little famous um, and on Wikipedia. So let's just try, uh, let's look for Albert Einstein. Um, here we go. And there he is, isn't that nice? Um, but what we also should do is actually here in our view controller, um, uh, what we want to do here, as soon as we uh, press return, let's say text field dot resign first responder, so that the keyboard hides when we press return. So who are we using now? Let's say Barack Obama and return. And there we go. There's the president. And now, as I've promised, we are going to deal with face recognition. We want to center our image around the, um, the actual face. And to do that, we will uh, simply enhance our wiki face class a little further and create another class function. And this is going to be called center image view on face. And as a parameter, we will give this an image view. And um, now let's give this a try. We're going to use core image for, uh, for the face detection. And to get started, what we first will need is a so called core image, uh, core image context. So let's create one, uh, which is a CI uh, context. And we have to initialize it with something. So let's use options and set these to nil. Um, but let's also create some options for the actual face detector. And this is going to be a dictionary with one key value pair, which is CI, um, uh, CI detector accuracy. 
and we'll set the CI detector accuracy to high. And now we can finally create the detector, which is our face detector. And this is going to be a so-called CI detector. And the type is um, a face detector. So CI detector type face. The context is the context we just created. And the options, of course, are the options that we just created. And with that done, we can now get a face image, which we will just extract from the image view here. So let's use it image view and its image. And since we're using core image, we have to convert that to a CI image. And we will simply use um, the CI image, CI image initializer and initialize it with a CG image. And to do that, we will use the face image and use a CG image and un unwrap it directly. And with that CI image now, we can now get the face features like nose position, uh, a face rectangle and so on. And to do that, we will simply call that features and use the detector and ask for the face, uh, the features in image. And as you can see, we will get an array of face features. And um, we will simply insert the CI image that we have created. And now we have to check if there are any features found. So let's see features. And since it's an array, we can simply count them. And if they are greater than zero, then we have found features. And now what we can do is create a face variable, uh, which is a CI face feature object. Uh, it's going to be uh, explicitly unwrapped. And um, now we can uh, iterate through the features um, or through the rects that we have found in the, um, in the features array. And then actually the, we are going to use the last one that is found and um, simply use the rect and cast it to a CI face feature again. All right. And now that we have our face rectangle, this is actually the rectangle that is placed directly around the face and it's very close. So what we should do actually, or what I personally like is to see a little of the surroundings as well. Um, so we will increase the frame size a little and we're going to do that by creating a new, um, a new variable called face rect with extended bounds or call it whatever you like and um, just use the face and its bounds. And now that we have that, we can increase them and we will start with the, um, the origin and its X value to put it at a little different position. And I have played a little uh, with these values and I'm going to uh, decrease them by 20 uh, to the left and um, also face rect with external origin dot y and decrease that by 30 to the top. Um, so you can play around with, with these values and, uh, and use whatever you like. Um, and now we also have to increase the size, so width and height of this rect. So um, size dot width and uh, we will um, increase them by 40 and the height uh, size not height, let's increase that by 60. Again here, um, you can play around with these values. The interesting part is now to come because we are going to use um, the image view and its layer and its contents rect to uh, move the image around and um, we will use CG rect make to do that. Um, but we, and this is why it's interesting. We uh, give that an X, a Y coordinate, and a width and height, but both, 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 both the size are uh, required in percent values. So we need to uh, convert our face rect um, to percent values or percentages. The other thing is that at the moment we're working with core image, and core image has another coordinate system as UIKit. So once we have a look, um, UIKit starts its 
coordinate system or it's the coordinate system's origin is in the top left corner. The uh, core image's coordinate system is in the lower left corner. So in order to uh, to work with um, with our contents rect, we have additionally to converting it to percentages, we also have to convert the coordinate systems. So let's do that. Um, this only matters, of course, for the x and y value. Um, and the x value is, is easy since there is not much of a change. But the y value is the interesting part. Um, so let's start with the x coordinate. And we can simply convert that to a percent value. So we use our face rect. Uh, with extended bounds and its origin and its x position and simply divide that by the um, face image and its size and its width. And by, by doing that, we have a percent value of, um, of our x position. For the y position, we, what we have to do is use the, um, the face image and its size and its height um, subtract the face rect with extended bounds origin in y direction, of course, and then again subtract um, the face rect um, with extended bounds and its uh, size and its height. Uh, all right. Just make a little drawing to to follow along here. Um, it's actually pretty simple. This gives us the um, the y position of our uh, of our um, face rect. Um, and now to get the percent value again, we have to use the face image and its size and its height to uh, divide that by it. Um, all right, so now we have x and y coordinates, and now we have to do the same, the size, so actually not exactly the same since we only need the percent value. Um, and to get that, let's say um, we begin with the, with the width of the face, which is going to be the face rect with extended bounds, um, size.width, divided by the face image and its size and its width and the height of the face, it's going to be actually just the same, just with the height. So face image, size, dot height. And now we can simply insert our values, uh, width face and height face. And um, I think that's it pretty much. Um, all we need to do now is um, give this a try and call it in our uh, main view controller. And to do that, we can, again, simply use our wiki face class and center image um, view on face, uh, since this is a class function. And then we can simply uh, insert our face image view as a parameter. And now we will again use Barack Obama. So as you can see here, we have the full image. And now we will um, run the app again. Again, search for Barack Obama, return, and there we go. Now, isn't that great? We have the image resized and centered around the face. I think this is pretty cool. And um, just look again, uh, the amount of code to achieve that is, is pretty amazing. It's, it's uh, like nothing. What Apple gives us here with the core image class and the CI detector is, is really amazing. So let's try it one more time. Um, maybe with uh, Steve Jobs again and return and there we go. Isn't that cool? Um, now this actually, this Wikiface class was part of a larger project which I'm currently working on, which combines a, a, a real app store app with a Udemy course which will feature the process of creating a complete iOS app which has a custom design and um, really cool stuff. So we will go from start to finishing the app. Um, it's going to be really cool. Uh, a really cool uh, Udemy course. And for everyone who sends me a use case in the comments below for this uh, for this Wikiface class or a link to a picture where you have used this uh, Wikiface class, as soon as I have released the new Udemy course, 
you will get free access. I will going to note down all of the response from the comments and inform you via private message. So stay tuned and have fun using this, uh, this cool class. Um, and you will find the uh, project files, of course, in the video description below. So have fun.